This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, we now bring you a discussion on fintech innovations for financial inclusion and good governance. The participants are Sharad Kohli, economic analyst, and Sonu Sood, AIR correspondent. Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi today inaugurated Infinity Forum, a thought leadership forum on a fintech, which will bring together the leading minds of the world in policy, business, and technology to discuss and come up with actionable insight into how technology and innovation can be leveraged by the fintech industry for inclusive growth and serving humanity at large. The event is being organized by International Financial Services Centers Authority (ISSCA) under the aegis of the Government of India in collaboration with Gift City and Bloomberg on December 3 and 4, 2021. Indonesia, South Africa and the UK are partner countries in the first edition of the forum where over 70 countries are participating. The Prime Minister said the Infinity Forum represents the immense possibilities that fintech has in India. It also shows the huge potential for India's fintech to provide benefits to the entire world. Sharaji, can you tell us about the importance of fintech sector and how far it has evolved in our country? So, no. If you ask me for the importance of the sector, I think cannot be described in words because, as Prime Minister said, I would like to pick up a word which uh, I wanted to use, but I'm glad Prime Minister used it first, which it is the lifeblood. When we say lifeblood, you mean the whole country, the whole economy, the whole system of the country runs on financial technology. If you go back many, many years and ages, in fact, there was a time when we used to transact using, and again, I remember Prime Minister did mention in his speech, and we used to have barter system. Then came the metals. You used to have those small metal pieces being traded in return of goods. And then came coins and notes, and then of course today look at where we are today. I mean, you want to make a payment to somebody, you are spoiled for choice. And the best part, Sonu, is this is not just a phenomena which is happening in the cities. Today you go to a village, go to a tier two, tier three city, a village, a suburban area. You will have somebody using a wallet. You will have somebody using a rupee. You will have a farmer who's got a agri agri credit card. You got. I mean, you are spoiled for choices. I mean, if I list, start listing out choices, uh, how financial technology has evolved in this country, and in a very very short period, I must say. I mean, I am amazed by the time taken by the country to suddenly in the last six seven years. We've seen a massive transformation in the way we transact. Forty-three crore Jandhan accounts. I think financial inclusion was one of the goals of this government. And I think to reach forty-three crore milestone of Jandhan accounts, well, banking was something which was left to rich people. I remember every time somebody from a village used to cross a bank. Oh, you know, this is meant for rich people. This is not meant for us. We don't have money. And today, forty-three crore of them have Jandhan accounts in seven years. 69 crore rupee cards today some of the international credit card companies are complaining that we are facing very tough competition from so what took them year decades and decades to develop india has developed in a very very short span of time so i think it's amazing i was talking of the number of options that we have today to pay you can use a bank account in bank account you can use a check you can use a drop you can go online You can withdraw from an ATM. Then you go to your wallet. You can use UPI. You've got so many options today to make a transaction. So I think financial technology is what drives this lifeblood. I mean, it gives direction to that lifeblood, which I said financial sector is the lifeblood, and technology is what drives it forward. Amazing progress, which is why Prime Minister came on this forum. He spoke, and I think the future of this country of one point close to four billion people in financial technology is very, very bright for the simple reason. that not only are we spoiled for choices on the way we transact with each other but also we are still evolving i mean today you can be carrying a card and you can just touch your card and make the payment up to a certain limit so i think very bright future and uh, we can look forward to real evolution and a revolution both so no in those terms in this evolution and revolution as you have put it so beautifully what are the challenges what are the pitfalls or let's say what are the aspects which need to be taken care of what would be the word of caution so that at the touch of a finger you do not lose your money you just make your life convenient prime minister also cited this in his speech the trust factor is a very very key element of the whole fintech ecosystem because if 
people do not trust the whole system as you rightly said to tomorrow your money disappears from your wallet money disappears from your bank account while you're doing online banking money disappears from a upi system which you are using your pin gets misused or whatever happens so i think trust is an important factor but what we have seen sono to be very precise in commenting on what you have said from the time when this revolution started 7 years 8 years ago or maybe a little before a little after and until now the trust has gradually increased for example i can give as an otp the one time password so where we used to have those passwords and those passwords used to get hacked today i think 90% of your transactions or dealings which are being done through mobile or through a digital means have an otp so i think otp has solved the problem majorly as you rightly said pitfalls are still there if i put it in one word security of fintech system is the key concern even today because as the technology evolves people who've got mischievous minds they also evolve they crack down on that they desperately try they work day and night to get past it so i think that is the matter of concern right now that is the pitfall right now but as i said this is an evolutionary process and i'm sure the technology in its positive mindset will evolve faster than the people who want to refute it than the people who want to defeat it than the people who want to misuse it i am very convinced that the evolutionary and i think otp is a great example in that direction otp has reduced the amount of frauds massively if you see over the last 4 to 5 years it has dramatically brought down the misuse of this digital system thefts in the digital system money disappearing from your bank account today you literally cannot do any financial transaction sonu without using an otp an otp is something which is generated by a system nobody knows but we find that some people try and fool the others they will say we are calling from so and so bank we are calling from so and so credit card company we would like your details you will get an otp please let us know the otp i find banks and all these fintech companies repeatedly educating the customers that we do not ask for your passwords so please do not reveal your personal details your passwords your ids to other people so i think as people get more and more educated on this financial technology on the whole digital system of finance i'm sure these pitfalls will lessen with time so Sharad ji transformational initiatives under digital india have opened doors for fintech innovations to be applied the pm said how can fintech help the cause of financial inclusion Well, so not just good governance; it is also about economic development. No country can progress if majority of its people stay out of the financial system, which is why this whole scheme was called financial inclusion. Seven years ago, 43 crore people. I'm just talking of these 43 crore people who have done an account. So I'm just giving an example. These 43 crore people. never had a bank account so how can you probably even think of a holistic development of an economy we cannot imagine financial development we cannot imagine economic development we cannot imagine financial evolution without people being included in the mainstream finance so i think with the jandhan accounts you had the dbts the direct benefit transfers happening we have the pm samman nidhi where farmers are being sent 2000 rupees every now and then a lakh and 62000 crores has already been it's just a press of a button people sitting in the treasury they press a button and suddenly crores and crores of people across the country receive the money who would have thought this we remember the era when people used to stand in queues to collect their money to collect their checks people never used to be able to reach the center now sitting on your home in the comfort of your home shall i say you get the money in your bank and on your mobile you get a message that money is right in there i mean who would have thought this of just a few years ago so i think including people in the financial sector this whole concept of financial inclusion is key as per me sharad ji on a larger scale the pm said we believe in sharing our experiences and expertise with the world and learning from them as well digital public infrastructure solutions can improve the lives of people around the world this inclusive approach uh, is crucial for making big strides in fintech coven upi rupay all provide an unparalleled opportunity for every country how do you see the world cooperating in the progress of fintech and india's role in it i think india has been a torch bearer if you ask me i mean if we leave out the developed world i mean there was a time when we used to hear in the developed world that you know while sitting on your desk you can do so many things you can make your payments and so and so today i think we don't need to envy them because we do much more than what they do i think india has set an example before the emerging economies the developing world whatever you want to call it the economies which are not yet developed they should take a lesson from india that if a population of the scale of this size 
1.4, 1.35 to 1.4 billion people can be reached out through financial technology, through financial inclusion, through strengthening these four pillars, then I think the rest of the countries are of smaller size anyway in terms of population. Because if you leave out China, well, China is a very confusing economy. It's a communist economy. You don't know it is developing. You don't know it is developed. It is neither developed nor developing. Let's leave out China. Other than China, I think India turns out to be the biggest democracy in the world. So I think every single country which finds itself challenged to implement financial technology in their country. I think India is an ideal for them because they can take an example, they can learn from India, they can come to India, they can see how government and these private agencies, it has been a result of PPP, I would say, so no, very clearly because it's been a case of public-private partnership because government has done its own job, whereas including these private players, the information technology companies, financial experts, financial services companies, they have come together hand in hand and that is what has given birth to this revolution. So I think those countries can come forward, they can send their people here, India can train them and I think India will be most happy to do it. The Prime Minister already indicated that we are here to support the world and we are here to welcome any kind of advice, any kind of expertise which is coming from around the world. But I am very convinced that the kind of technology which the Indian brains have developed, I think is unmatched and anything which is new in this sector is also going to come out from India. There is nothing which India is going to leave out in terms of financial development and financial inclusion. The Prime Minister said Gift City represents India's openness to ideas, innovation and investment. IFSC at Gift City was born out of the vision that finance combined with technology would be an important part of India's future development. Sharaji, in the same vein as what you were saying just now, we are seeing many Indians are increasingly gaining leadership roles in many tech giants of the West. You think that is another proof that India can be or already is a major driver of fintech revolution in the world? If I pick up threads from what you said, Sonu, and if I put it up in a lighter way, when we sit together, sometimes we joke that if there were no Indians, the most advanced country in the world and the most developed country in the world, the United States of America, would probably come to a standstill. I mean, it might sound in a lighter tone, but that is true. It is the Indian brains which are running technology around the world, not just in America, go to Europe. Some of the brightest brains which have created the kind of environment and technology in which their countries survive, their countries run, their countries are the world. You know, they are formed, created, run, maintained, supervised, monitored, headed by Indians. I think it is a matter of pride. And I would, you know, be happy the day these minds probably come back to India and some of the information or expertise they have gained while being in these large corporations they can come and share with, although we keep hearing with people like Sundar Pichai, people like Satya Nadela coming to India, giving lectures, doing workshops, trying to educate the way these larger corporations work. But I think it is a matter of pride for India that some of the finest technologies around the world are being headed by Indians. For example, all that you see on Google, you see on Microsoft, tomorrow you see on Twitter. I mean, it's a matter of pride that there is an Indian brain behind it who's probably leading the whole team which is doing it. I think it's a great source of inspiration. And all the young minds in India, I must tell you, Sonu, they are getting inspired by these corporate honchos. They are getting inspired. They said, if somebody from us can become a Sundar Pichai or a Satya Nadela or probably a Parag Agarwal, then why can't we? do the same thing. After all, they were educated in our institution. They were from my city. They were from my school. You know, you keep hearing these stories here and there. I think these people have set an example. So I don't see them in a negative way. There was somebody in a critical way saying, so no, that, you know, India, there's been brain drain from India and some finest brains have gone abroad. I feel otherwise that these people are a source of inspiration and they are giving birth to some of the finest technology corporations in India. You see the number of startup unicorns. Today we are adding unicorns faster than probably we change our clothes. It gives us happiness. It is a matter of pride and I see a day where you'll have these large corporations being formed within India. We cannot just look at America. Tomorrow, there may be a day where some of the biggest corporations in the world in technology, maybe somewhere in Bangalore, Gurugram, Delhi, Jaipur, wherever. I think that day is not too far, sir. Sharaji, thank you so much for this in-depth and insightful discussion. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on fintech innovations for financial inclusion and good governance. The participants were Sharad Kohli, Economic Analyst, and Sonu Sood, AIR Correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsttalks at gmail.com.